Starring Teen of Thirty Ghost Stories by Various Authors. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. His Dead Wife's Photograph This story created a sensation when it was first told. It appeared in the papers, and many big physicists and natural philosophers were, at least so they thought, able to explain the phenomenon. I shall narrate the event and also tell the reader what explanation was given, and let him draw his own conclusions. This is what happened. A friend of mine, a clerk in the same office as myself, was an amateur photographer. Let's call him Jones. Jones had a half-plate, Sanders camera with a Ross lens and a Thornton Picard behind lens shutter, with pneumatic release. The plate in question was a Rattan's Ordinary, developed with Ilford Pyro Soda Developer prepared at home. All these particulars I give for the benefit of the more technical reader. Mr. Smith, another clerk in our office, invited Mr. Jones to take the likeness of his wife and sister-in-law. This sister-in-law was the wife of Mr. Smith's elder brother, who was also a government servant, then on leave. The idea of the photograph was that of the sister-in-law. Jones was a keen photographer himself. He had photographed everybody in the office, including the peons and sweepers, and had even supplied every sitter with his copies of his handiwork. So he most willingly consented, and anxiously waited for the Sunday on which the photograph was to be taken. Early on Sunday morning, Jones went to the Smith's. The arrangement of light in the veranda was such that a photograph could only be taken after midday, so he stayed there to breakfast. About one in the afternoon, all arrangements were complete, and the two ladies, Mrs. Smith's, were made to sit in two cane chairs, and after long and careful focusing, and moving the camera for about an hour, Jones was satisfied at last, and an exposure was made. Mr. Jones was sure that the plate was all right, and so a second plate was not exposed, although in the usual course of things this should have been done. He wrapped up his things and went home, promising to develop the plate the same night and bring a copy of the photograph the next day to the office. The next day, which was Monday, Jones came to the office very early, and I was the first person to meet him. "'Well, Mr. Photographer,' I asked, "'what success?' "'I got the picture all right,' said Jones." unwrapping an unmounted picture and handing it over to me most funny don't you think so no i don't think it's all right at any rate i did not expect anything better from you i said no said jones the funny thing is that the two ladies sat quite right i said the third stood in the middle there was no third lady at all there said jones then you imagine she was there and there we find her "'I tell you, there were only two ladies there when I exposed,' insisted Jones. He was looking awfully worried. "'Do you want me to believe that there were only two persons when the plate was exposed and three when it was developed?' I asked. "'That is exactly what has happened,' said Jones. "'Then it must be the most wonderful developer you used. Or was it that this was the second exposure given to the same plate?' The developer is the one which I have been using for the last three years, and the plate, the one I charged on Saturday night out of the new box that I had purchased only on Saturday afternoon. A number of other clerks had come up in the meantime, and were taking great interest in the picture and in Jones' statement. It is only right that a description of the picture be given here for the benefit of the reader. I wish I could reproduce the original picture, too but that for certain reasons is impossible. When the plate was actually exposed, there were only two ladies, both of whom were sitting in cane chairs. When the plate was developed, it was found that there was in the picture a figure, that of a lady, standing in the middle. She wore a broad-edged doty. The reader should not forget that all the characters are Indians, only the upper half of her body being visible the lower being covered up by the low backs of the cane chairs. She was distinctly behind the chairs, and consequently slightly out of focus. Still, everything was quite clear. Even her long necklace was visible through the little opening in the doty near the right shoulder. 
she was resting her hands on the back of the chairs and the fingers were nearly totally out of focus but a ring on the right finger was clearly visible she looked like a handsome young woman of twenty-two short and thin one of the earrings was also clearly visible although the face itself was slightly out of focus one thing and probably the funniest thing that we overlooked then but observed afterwards was that immediately behind the three ladies was a barred window the two ladies who were one on each side covered up the bars to a certain height from the bottom with their bodies but the lady in the middle was partly transparent because the bars of the window were very faintly visible through her this fact however as i have said already we did not observe then we only laughed at jones and tried to assure him that he was either drunk or asleep at this moment smith of our office walked in removing the trouser clips from his legs smith took the unmounted photograph looked at it for a minute turned red and blue and green and finally very pale of course we asked him what the matter was and this was what he said the third lady in the middle was my first wife who has been dead these eight years before her death she asked me a number of times to have her photograph taken she used to say that she had a presentiment that she might die early i did not believe in her presentiment myself but i did not object to the photograph so one day i ordered the carriage and asked her to dress up we intended to go to a good professional she dressed up and the carriage was ready but as we were going to start news reached us that her mother was dangerously ill so we went to see her mother instead the mother was very ill and i had to leave her there immediately afterwards i was sent away on duty to another station and so could not bring her back it was in fact after full three months and a half that i returned and then thought her mother was all right my wife was not within fifteen days of my return she died of puerperal fever after childbirth and the child died too a photograph of her was never taken when she dressed up for the last time on the day that she left my home she had the necklace and the earrings on as you see her wearing in the photograph my present wife has them now but she does not generally put them on this was too big a pill for me to swallow so i at once took french leave from my office bagged the photograph and rushed out on my bicycle i went to mr smith's house and looked mrs smith up of course she was much astonished to see a third lady in the picture but could not guess who she was this i had expected as supposing smith's story to be true this lady had never seen her husband's first wife the elder brother's wife however recognized the likeness at once and she virtually repeated the story which smith had told me earlier that day she even brought out the necklace and the earrings for my inspection and conviction they were the same as those in the photograph all the principal newspapers of that time got hold of the fact and within a week there was any number of applications for the ghostly photograph but mr jones refused to supply copies of it to anybody for various reasons the principle being that smith would not allow it i am however the fortunate possessor of a copy which for obvious reasons i am not allowed to show to anybody one copy of the picture was sent to america and another to england i do not now remember exactly to whom my own copy i showed to the reverend father m a d s c b d etc and asked him to find out a scientific explanation for the phenomenon the following explanation was given by the gentleman i am afraid i shall not be able to reproduce the learned father's exact words but this is what he meant or at least what i understood him to mean the girl in question was dressed in this particular way on an occasion say ten years ago her image was cast on space and the reflection was projected from one luminous body one planet on another till it made a circuit of millions and millions of miles in space and then came back to earth at the exact moment when our friend mr jones was going to make the exposure take for instance the case of a man who was taking a photograph of a mirage 
he is photographing place x from place y when x and y are say two hundred miles apart and it may be that his camera is facing east while placing x is actually towards the west of place y in school i had read a little of science and chemistry and could make a dry analysis of a salt but this was an item too big for my limited comprehension the fact however remains and i believe it that smith's first wife did come back to this terrestrial globe of ours over eight years ago after her death to give a sitting for a photograph in a form which though it did not affect the retina of our eye did impress a sensitized plate in a form that did not affect the retina of the eye i say because jones must have been looking at his sitters at the time when he was pressing the bulb of the pneumatic release of his time and instantaneous shutter the story is most wonderful but this is exactly what happened smith says this is the first time he has ever seen or heard from his dead wife it's popularly believed in india that a dead wife gives a lot of trouble if she ever revisits this earth but this is thank god not the experience of my friend mr smith it is now over seven years since the event mentioned above happened and the dead girl has never appeared again i would very much like to have a photograph of the two ladies taken once more but i have never ventured to approach smith with a proposal in fact i learnt photography myself with a view to take the photograph of the two ladies but as i have said i have never been able to speak to smith about my intention and probably never shall the ten pounds that i spent on my cheap photographic outfit may be a waste but i have learnt an art which though rather costly for my limited means is nevertheless an art worth learning End of story nineteen.